this is a short video uh, on how I build my chassis um, for and I built countless, countless chassis and I've never ever had any problems with them so I find that it's quite a successful way of building chassis it's not the only way um, but it's the way that works for me and what I'm going to show you is um, how I put together a Duchess chassis uh, from a David Andrews kit uh, just as far as getting the alignment of all the axles relative to the the frames and uh, the coupling rods so so that I, we get to a rolling chassis uh, what I've got in front of you now is the um, the actual chassis etch and the valve gear etch Slater's wheels four track axle boxes uh, which I've used again countless times. I've never had a problem with them. Originally, they, I think they were uh, produced by Meteor Models, but um, and they may be produced by somebody else now. Uh, I'll also show you the tool that I use to get all the alignment is a JPL chassis assembly jig, which again I've used countless times and I've never had any problems with it. Uh, I find it very simple to use. It wasn't expensive, and and it works. It works for me. It's not the only way, but it works for me. So, um, what what I will show you is the way that I power my um, um, engines or my locos, and I always uh, drive onto the rear axle, which I make rigid, and I make give vertical movement on the two front axles, the two forward axles. Um, what I will eventually do is put a pivot on the on the front axle so that it rocks um, and the middle axle I'll put some springing onto it uh, so I would probably make about a millimeter of vertical float in both of those axles um, so the wheels the Slater's wheels I will fit those with as they come they're, they're designed to be made fitted with 12 BA screws I found that in the past they've sheared so I always fit 10 BA screws in in the place and I tap the um, bushes that come with them and use those as retaining nuts so we're back to the etch now the basic chassis etch um these are the frames that are about as long as any frames that i've ever come across because i think this is probably about the biggest engine that i've ever built um so they just it's a case of cutting them out at the little snipping them out um and then we uh what i've got to do is because i'm springing it uh on on the back of it you will see there are representations of the the cutouts the axle box cutouts and this, where the center line of the wheels, which is really very useful. So the the back ones, I will just um, fit the bushes, solder the bushes in there. Uh, and with these, I need to cut them out around that square and then around a little bit of a profile there so that the it leaves the springs um, in situ and then there's several layers of springing to, to solder upon the inside face. I used to make these detachable uh, when I was springing them with 16 maybe 14 16 BA bolts attaching the spring units so I could drop the axle boxes straight out uh, if, in case I ever needed to re uh, replace them but I've never had to so now what I do is just cut the just cut the rectangle out float the axle boxes in solder them in and then if need be i can put a stop a restrictor behind here to um to restrict the vertical movement i aim i aim to have um about no more than a millimeter of float in e either direction from the center line for the actual um axle box center but anyway, we'll carry on. So I'm going to cut these out now and um, 
and then there is some riveting to do before I start before I get much further so it's just I just use my little snippers and go around carefully not so not to kink things not to twist anything okay I will carry on with that this is one of the frames as it's cut out and there's just the the pips the, the edge pips all the way around so I'll come for, I'll file these off um, carefully file them off I also tend to file just very carefully file any cusps off uh, all around the um, the chassis because there are times when that that can make a difference that that little bit of a cusp if you're soldering something up to it particularly with the likes of spacers if you're soldering and you leave the cusps on it makes the chassis slightly wider and it could give you problems so I, I, I generally cut them all just dress them all off and work my way around slowly with a Swiss file and um, to get it all smooth so I've cleaned off the two um, main frames now taken all the burrs and all the sharp edges off and at this stage what I would normally do is check that they are identical because again in the past I've come across supposedly left hand and right hand frames that are supposed to be the same but they're not actually so what I've done what I do is coming back to me that uh, the back axle is going to be my driver and that's going to be a fixed bush so what I've found is that um, this hole is, is slightly undersized for the um, for the bush and the these the bearings are um, 275 thou diameter well I haven't got um, a ream of that size so I've just very very carefully taken that's only only a thou or two just taking a thou or two out with a with a half round file just just filing round and round so what I do what I do at this stage now is just it just pops in and I, I've done the same on both of them and they ju it just fits in and as you can see it's it's an absolute perfect match that's important for when I start assembling the um, the two uh, frames together apart from anything else so what I'm going to do now is cut the two cut out the four uh, forward the, the center and the forward axle boxes to the shape around there and then I'm going to cut the the middle bit around there and I'll cut that with them with my piercing saw um, when I've done that I can then solder the dummy springs which are all, all these uh, onto the inside and that then becomes the stop for the um, for the floating axle boxes This is just how I cut out the uh, the slots for the uh, axle boxes. It's just a straightforward piercing saw. Uh, the, the only important thing really is this: that it's actually a number six uh, blade, which is very very fine teeth, because we're only cutting through uh, about I don't know 15 thou of material. So you'll notice. <laughs> I've just marked on which ones I've got to cut out because um, uh, it's too easy to cut the wrong one out and, and then that gives us a, a problem so so I'll just carry on cutting them out now well I've cut out the apertures in the chassis now at the two positions and I managed to keep the back axle clear um, I'm now going to solder the springs onto the back okay I just I'm going to use my resistance soldering iron to do that um, so if you watch I'll see see if we can um, do one while you're while the camera's running
This is the uh, just solder cream. So now I gotta get one on and then I get the other layer on afterwards. Well that's about the easiest way to do it so sparks and what have you but oh So that, that's just gripped on there. So what I'll uh, do now is put the other one on top and then go around and solder all the, all the areas with the thing actually off the steel because the steel does draw in quite a lot of the heat. I just hold it so and then try and I really don't know how I'll manage with it before uh, before I got one of these because they're a wonderful thing. They do, though I, I find that they they do have the limitations, but uh, and a lot of people just a lot of people use the uh, use a, use jaws to grip the component, but. Uh, I don't know, I just find it easier to work off, off this steel plate. And there's the first one. I've got to uh, do all six of those now, which takes a bit of time, so I'll switch off now. Right, so now I've um, soldered on the etchings for the springs onto the two chassis halves, um, and they need a good clean up. But first off, I'm going to start putting the spacers in. Uh, and get the chassis assembled and then before I put the axle boxes in I'll give it a really good clean off but I've also uh, put the rivets in these are half etched rivets and I've put them in um, at this stage I'm now more or less following the instructions in the uh, in the kit itself uh, for the time being and um, we'll uh, start cutting out the uh, the etchings now as in uh, the instructions
this is one of the spaces uh, just a tip here uh, this one is number H and you've got a solder two six BA nuts in what I do is I think it's again something that Bob Alderman uh, first point uh, pointed out if you put your screws in tight uh, screw the nut down tight you can solder around it without the solder uh, running through to the nut uh, the alternative I do have some steel uh, 6BA screws but I've never really had a problem with it soldering up what's more important is at this stage I mentioned earlier uh, about trimming the cusps off uh, the etching cusps off and where it mates with the chassis with the chassis mainframes you must just dress it back to take the uh, the sharp cusp off because otherwise you could end up with an oversized uh, chassis uh, which is might give you a lot of problems so it only needs just just a whisker taking off just just to make it a full surface that's all I'm ready now to uh, solder the uh, spaces in onto the first frame. What I have noticed though is that these lugs are uh, are longer or thick uh, deeper than the uh, width of the frames. So I've had to cobble together this little setup. They're just two pieces of timber that I had um, to hand, uh, just and so that I can set the the two side frames across. The reason I'm, I've got the two side frames is that I use a simple, just a little piece of 2 by one timber to get the uh, uh, spaces square. So I, I, to get to allow for the spare frame thickness, it has to, I need some support under the, the back one while I'm soldering the front. Um, so, and what I also do at this stage is I will just put a little bit of solder on. I won't, I won't solder them up properly, because, just in case there is any misalignment when I put the frames together. But uh, it's it's basically just a case of throwing the thing on the floor. Make sure that you've got the arrow uh, pointing forward. Slot it in position and then put the block behind it a little bit of flux and then just really just a, just a little tap of solder at this stage I'll put the one at the back as well So, as you can see, that, where are we, there we are, that, that is actually proud of the, um, of the outside face of the frame now. We can solder that off, but if you try and solder them in place without a gap behind them, then you're going to, again, increase the width, which you really don't want. So the instructions say that we'll put the that one in place. Once it, once it, it's all right now, um, I'll just solder the other two on. Just tack the other two in place. Um, this is the uh, the bogey. Uh, frame the buggy support frame so again just just hold it in place I'm find, finding that these some of these slots are just a little bit tight but they're popping all right so now holding it square Just a little blob of solder there, 
and then the other frame which uh, is here. This one doesn't have a, a forward marking on it but it from the uh, from the sketch you can see which way around it fits onto the uh, frame and that one fits in there. So if we pull that over the spacer or the gap put my little block in place and hold it square there we are so I've now got now got these three frames soldered in roughly soldered into place now we've got to solder the other spaces, the rear spaces have to go, uh, David uh, in the instructions says you put them in the, the other side of the frame. This is because of expansion, um, it's been explained elsewhere but if you put them all in one side the heat possibly could expand one frame and you could possibly end up with a twisted frame. So um, I'll just prepare those. Now that we've uh, soldered on the the frames, the, the, the basic spacers at one end of the chassis are on one frame and the other uh, spacers are on the other frame. We can, for the first time, hopefully clip it together. And this is where we'll find out if, the, if these have been put in square and if everything's fairly accurate. So... The tabs should should engage. Right, and there we are. So it's the first time the two frames have been put together, and that doesn't look so bad. So what we've got to do now is start aligning everything up and finding out and re really setting it up in detail. The first thing we've got to do, I've got to take it apart and then put solder the fixed bushes into the back uh, frame and then we're going to mount it onto um, the uh, JPL chassis jig and we will get the alignment of the, initially the alignment of the axles and the top surface because that becomes them almost after the alignment of the back end, the the main drivers that becomes the top surface becomes the most important thing um, if there's any twist in that then when we attach the body to it and we start screwing things together the the chassis is going to start twisting to the uh, to the body because the body is generally far stronger than the chassis i normally um, most chassis are designed, seems to be, most look, kits seem to be designed to screw at the back and screw at the front to the body. What I tend to do is make a slotted arrangement at the front so that it slots in and then at the back I'll screw at the back so that you're not actually trying to attach it hard at two or three positions and it doesn't tend to twist the same. So I'm going to strip it down now and I'll just solder the bushes in uh, and we'll then set it up in the chassis jig. This is a uh, JPL uh, chassis jig, uh, alignment jig, and it's very simple really, uh, but uh, without it I'd really struggle. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I think I've built I don't know, countless chassis with this, and I've never had a problem with it. Um, the very basics are, are that it sits on a flat surface on these four legs here. It's screwed together uh, for alignment. You, when you get it, you get it as a the two side frames, and these are, it's all loose. So you do have to screw it, uh, set it up yourself to a certain extent. But basically, you've got your one fixed axle 
there it's meant it's meant to be for setting the chassis in alignment uh, the axles in alignment but you've got one fixed axle there and then which runs right the way through and then this surface here is in line with the bottom of the 316 axle holes so for setting your sh um, chassis up you fix in that position there and then you just rest it down with with a whole series of these depending on how many you've got uh, how many axles your loco's got but they just rest on there and as you, as you put them put them on you settle it down and then you solder it together but what i also use it for is setting the top surface so when i when i'm a soldering the two side frames together so what i what i'll do is i've i've put the bushes in here now in these two and i know that they're they're, they're a little bit tight uh, but i can deal with that later so if i put that in there now and then feed the axle through right the way through okay it's now pivoting on that point there I suppose really uh, a longer piece of 316 silver steel in there would have do, would do better because if you're not careful it it drops out <laughs> but uh, to keep an eye on that and and then what I'll do is just put a spacer underneath there so that it's resting the top of the chassis is resting on there. I know that I know that the top is is aligned at the back, the top surface, and here. So so at that position now, that is uh, perfectly level. If you look to the side, you can, I'll slide it over. You can see that it's also parallel to the frame. Now what you could do is you could sellotape a couple of little steel spaces on one side here to hold it away from the bush but um, I don't normally bother now I would m just make sure that those they're clipped in place now and you can go around and gently solder them put a put another little tiny tab of solder in at um, at each of the spacer positions so the front spacers are all soldered into this frame and the rear spacers are all soldered into that frame so I can just go around now and and dab a little bit of solder into making sure that that's sat down on there so that the the two the tops of the two frames are resting on this on this pin with it lifted up and once we've done that we can that we can take it out and solder it up properly and if need be just run run a, a reamer through through the driving axles if if we need to because it does it is just a little bit tight it's one of the bushes has gone in very slightly out of alignment So if we just, uh, I'm going to turn it around a little bit more. Right, we're all lined up. You have to remember at this stage not to put your fingers right directly <laughs> behind the solder otherwise <laughs> and I've done it otherwise you end up with very burnt fingers for several days
move it a bit closer. It helps to have a bit of flux on. These little, these are just cheap children's paintbrushes. They last about a week, but it's um, they're so cheap. But I meant to get some more this morning. I forgot, so that one's a bit stubbly, and that's my last one. Right, so we can now take it out, take the chassis out, and that's, it's settled in nicely as that now, it's um, must have been slightly twisted when I was playing, uh, when I tried assembled it. So now we've got that and we've got it perfectly flat on the top. So we've got the alignment of the of the main axle. We've got the top perfectly in line. These are in line, but that, that really, when we float the axle boxes in into position, um, the these cutouts are not so important anymore. So now I, I can I can go ahead now and solder this up um, permanently now the two side frames and if need be put ad the additional spaces in what David uh, Andrews does say and it's obvious now is that that pick up that that term um, spacer there will have to come out because it's um, going to foul the motor but uh, we can do that afterwards after we've soldered everything else up So we've now got the chassis assembled, I've put all the frame spacers in and um, it's now a case of all these, I'm going to dress off all these little pips that are protruding through from the spacers. Uh, David does say in the instructions that you will probably have to remove this spacer which is the firebox spacer which is pretty obvious yes that you have to. Um, I must admit I've been very very much impressed by how well this has gone together uh, even to the the taper on the uh, after the in the firebox area under the cab it's a, there's a millimeter taper uh, on on there and just flexing it using these spaces both sides have just pulled in that fraction so it's uh, it's gone it's been very it's gone together very very well and it's still still perfectly level on the top surface and the axle is also clear so rather than using a file I just use this which is what's known as an Abra disc uh, I know you, you can get them uh, we used to use them at work and it, I just go around and just dress off the uh, protruding tones it's a bit easier than filing so when I finish this when I finish going around these now I'm going to take it in and give it a right good wash before I go any further and um, give it in a wash in, in thiacol I think it is a thiacol um, just just to get rid of any acid or any fluxes or anything that I've got um, at this stage and make it clean for the next stage which is setting up the axle boxes so um, we'll leave that for the next time
Well, here's the chassis. I've washed it all off and cleaned it all off now, and it's it's looking a lot better. Um, right, the next thing is to put the axle boxes on. These are the axle boxes. It's an old set. Uh, they're a bit more than ten quid now, but um, I found that they're they're the they, they, they do for me. So um, I've used them on a, an awful lot and I've never had any problems with them apart from opening them sometimes right they come they they technically they're not really a matched pair but but as they come um the idea originally or the 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 idea for them is to drill a hole and tap through from the top and fit a spring so that you've got you've got a spring in facility in there uh, between the top of the axle box and and this and the peg, uh, what I what I tend to do though is well I'll show you, but you can also there's room in the corners again it's something Bob Alderman did he 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 put a, a bar across the bottom and drilled through with, uh, with and tapped it 12 ba so he got like a little uh, keeper plate on the bottom. Um, I've done that when I used to fit these separately, fit these springs separately. Uh, I used to do that, but now uh, because it's sort of captive in once once they're soldered in, uh, they're in until you unsolder them. So I I don't bother with that now. But um, what I do do is uh, I number them just with punch uh, punchy little centre pops. In, in this area here, one for axle for uh, position one and one on the top. That So if I take them out, once I've got them nice and smooth, uh, smooth and sliding, uh, I can take them out and put them back in the right, um, the right axle box into the right uh, housing. So, um, Yeah, they're, they're all reasonably smooth. There's a little bit of play in them. Sometimes uh, they're a bit tight. But um, what you do find, occasionally I do find, is that the the actual um, frame can get squeezed a little bit uh, so that they become tight. But you can prise that out again. So they, they really work against the cheeks against the these cheeks I don't know if you can see that or not they really work against the cheeks rather than the slot but um, right so the first thing to do is to to cut them off cut them off and dress off the little bit of a cast lump that there is there after you cut it off and to do that I just saw through them and then again with with the uh, with this I just dress off the back. So now we've got the axle box, all four of them, they're nicely, nice, smoothly sliding up. Uh, as you can see from this one, I've popped, there's four little tiny centre pops on it. Those positions there, that's one, two, three, four. And I've also popped four, you can't really see them very well, but there's four four pops on the top of the axle box itself. So that indicates which way around that goes. If I, if I take them out, that indicates that it has to go back that way nice and smoothly. This is number four. Again, I've just, you know, marked on the um, position of the, of the six axles. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four, and then five and six are the driving axles. Right, so we now have to set them, as I said I, I, earlier on, I like to have about a millimetre of vertical float above the um, centre line for the, for the axle boxes to float up as well as down. What David has very kindly done with this design is, he, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's, um, you can see it through right there. He's marked the centre line, the vertical centre line of each axle. So I, I've just checked up. 
that web there if we can focus it there we are that web is really about where I want the the um, center of the hole to be so that that web really needs to be in line with the etched mark on the axles so we're now, I'm now going to set them up uh, in the jig with the with the axle alignments right well I'll show you with it all set up now um, I'm not going to show you how much I struggled actually getting particularly the front axle box in because it took me oh it was a real pig of a thing but um, I've got it lined up now with the fixed axle at the back these chassis alignment um, uh, tools you can they're readily bought uh, I found I've had to cut the springs in half uh, because they, they're just too strong otherwise but they're they're designed you to 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 hold the axle boxes the full axle boxes pressed out against the frames and the the actual unit will float about within that within within that area there so i've put i've put the the fixed axle in now and these two are set up now uh, and i'm using the coupling rods to align the axle boxes what I've done as I said uh, it's very difficult to see but um, the the web I've lined up with the um, I don't think you can see it or not the actual web I've lined it up with the mark in the chassis and looking down them I've got them all got them pretty much vertical now and uh, they're re they're ready for soldering in place Okay. Um, it is. It is, there's. There's no right way of doing this. It's. It's. It's a struggle at this stage. I, well, I've always struggled, but this one particularly, I've. Uh, I found very, very difficult. But anyway, there we go. So I'll. I'll just put a. A, a, a quick tab of uh, solder along the axle box now, along each axle box to position it. Right, so I've tack soldered uh, all the um, horn blocks in place now. Uh, they're just tacked in. So now it's a, it really is a case of taking taking the rods off, the pins out, the springs and everything, and putting the wheels on and see what happens. Um, just uh, <laughs> it's worth make sure that you've got the rods the right way around because in the past speaking from experience I've put them in the wrong way around and uh, it's given me a problem I've, I've removed the uh, the alignment uh, pins now and you can see the the actual axle boxes are now trapped in the um, in the in the chassis so we know if we put the wheels on now um, We don't worry about uh, shimming at this stage. It's just a case of seeing what we've got. Remember the 90 degrees to each other, the wheels. That's the driving axle. Just out, just looking at as to which side the insulation is on. So I, there we go. So I can put this one through here now. <clears throat> That's a little bit tight. That uh, bearing. So I've got a 
a 3 sixteenths reamer. And I'll just run that through. If I can find that. Most unusual is that. Right, that was that one, was it? So it's, this is a taper reamer, uh, so it's only taking a little bit out of the out of the one. Uh, it's a, it hand reamers are taper reamers, so. Gosh. Let's um I'm not sure whether it's the uh A little bit tight. I think as much as anything, it's the the axle's not very clean. There we are. Ah, oh well, I think we'll scrub this uh, bit of film. Well, after we, uh, I had to cut the other, the last clipping off, um, I sat down again and I've assembled the whole chassis now, uh, just to see that everything lines up. And it's a little bit lumpy at the moment, but it's, it's not so bad. But what there is now is there's an awful lot of side play particularly in the uh, axles with the uh, axle boxes, with the floating axle boxes. There's actually about 120 thou uh, clearance of play in them. Now I don't want the minimum, I want just want the minimum of uh, clearance on the front axle. Um, I found really on the middle axle that um, if I can, if I have a millimetre clearance that's as much as I need and I don't have any clearance or minimum clearance on the back axle. Also what I've noticed is it, that the normally I if you can see um, the you can see the I've, I've put one bush just one ABA bush behind the um, coupling rods uh, but it's not enough as you can see perhaps perhaps you can see I don't know um, that the coupling rod is actually rubbing against the 
the boss on the wheel. So what, I, what I'll do, I'll, I'm going to strip it down now and I'm going to equally, equally shim the um, either side um, to get the shimming that I want and I'll put another washer underneath each of these crank pins to, to give me a little bit of extra clearance. Well I've uh, stripped it down again now and I've shimmed it up um, and it's certainly a lot smoother now. There is just a, a slight tight spot but as yet the front and the centre axle are, are still floating vertically. I have no restriction on them so uh, I've got to, to set the height up now um, and what I, what I do with this and um, is I will I'm probably going to have to cut this this piece here now through here because I want to get a screw to go through to um, to bear on the top of the the front axle so th that gives me adjustment that gives me height adjustment so that I can set it correctly uh, so I've put the two I don't think you can see or not but I've put a couple of washers behind each of these behind each um, of the there we go I've put a couple of washers behind the um, coupling rod and it's now standing proud of the boss which is what I wanted so that's the next step to to provide this this jacking facility uh, I've, I've tried different ways over the years I've run uh, rods I've run um, beams off pieces of chassis uh, I could probably just put a, a wedge underneath there to the height but that wouldn't give me the adjustment that I need and really I prefer to have a screw adjustment so that's what I'm going to do um, I'll either replace this with one with a boss on it and run a screw right the way down or I might just cut it cut it out and then put a piece of H section across from the the bosses on the axle box itself and work from them. I've done that and that's worked out quite well in the past so um, that's the next thing anyway to decide what to do Right, so what I finally decided to do was to um, was to cut through the central web and put a piece of channel section across, soldered to the two um, bosses on the um, axle box frames on the horn blocks. Uh, all, it, all I've used is just a little piece of, I don't know if you can see it or not, come on, it's not going to focus is it, yes there we go, there, it's just a piece of um, channel, brass channel section and um, I've sold it, I've put a an 8BA screw in it and soldered um, a nut into the channel and then I've soldered the whole thing to the underside of the lugs so that it's actually the weight is pushing up against it all the time um, it's, it should be strong enough but uh, only time will tell but once I've done that uh, I've now got and I've also measured the height so I've leveled it up so I've now got rocking axle boxes uh, I might end up having to put a, a downward restriction on them because but for the moment I'm, I'll leave it as it is um, and later on I will put um, a spring just a, a piece of fairly hard spring wire from one of these um, 
from one of, one of the plates to bear down on the centre axle just to push it down just to give it some uh, some sort of pressure down so now at this stage um, it all, it'll all have to come off again but I'll just put a little it feels to be pretty smooth uh, there's just one little bit of a tight spot um, I might need to have to take a little bit out, out of one of the um, uh, coupling rod holes uh, just with a, a taper brooch just just to take a, a thou a couple of thou out. but at this stage I generally put a drop of oil on everything now and see how smooth it is at that stage well there we go it's now it's now on the on I've oiled it up and set it up just on on a bit of a test track and it's it's quite nice and smooth is that especially when it stays on the track so I think that's um, okay now so what I'm going to do next is put the motor in and I'll put it set it up on my rolling road and uh, if there are any tight spots or any any problems that'll show it The motor I use uh, is, is a three-stage um, Ron Chaplin type motor from MSC. I've used these on a number of engines and uh, I used them when they were originally when they were by Ron Chaplin and I've never had any problems with them. They're nice and smooth. Uh, this is not to say that other motor gearboxes are, are not suitable but um, this is just my preference. What I did notice with this, I, I normally go for a three-stage uh, motor gearbox on a big engine. Um, but with the paperwork with this, I ordered this from uh, MSC through the post. And what they, on, on their paperwork, it really says, that, you know, for a big passenger engine, a two-stage gearbox, which is a bit cheaper, is, uh, is a better bet. But um, I've got this now, so I'm going to fit it in. So... And I will fit it on the the back axle. It's getting rather a clutter in my workshop now. I'll have a tidy up in a minute. But I'll fit it on the back axle, um, probably in in that in that plane, or I, I might go for that. I don't I don't know yet. Uh, but but either way, this frame has got to come out. So. Um, that's the next job really to cut that out so that I can mount the motor what I do, what I also do is I make a little from um, a little tough null plate to fit on here with with a, a gap down the middle and I'll sol solder the wires to it uh, to one wire to each side uh, it stops any stress or anything on these little tags and but I also put a couple of L-shaped bits of wire on to um, sticking up so that I can put a pair of crocodile clips on directly to the motor uh, without creating any problems or any stresses on everything on anything but uh, yeah we'll, well we'll see how we go on with that but that's the next job after I've had a cup of tea well I've um assemble the wheels on now and I've put the motor in and as I was explaining earlier uh, I generally strap a piece of tough null, copper clad tough null to the motor just with some duct tape uh, it's actually split down the middle so that one half is insulated from the other I've soldered the leads from the motor onto it and I generally solder the a couple of pieces of L section just brass wire on so that I can just put my crocodile clips on there and put power to it at this stage um, it's just very convenient uh, so I've already checked this so I know that I know that it runs reasonably well so if the motor at the moment is is flopping about it's not um, I, haven't, I haven't set it at any angle or anything yet but it's And just clip them on and and it runs you can see it's fairly free I can pick up the 
you see the the wheels floating on the on the ax on the uh, in the axle boxes now. So it's um, so everything's pretty free. What I didn't show you was how to um, align the axles on a fixed axle bit, uh, chassis. What I'll do, I'll put the uh, the bogey together and I'll use the JPL chassis tool just to show you how simple it is to align up uh, the axle centres on a rigid chassis. I've noticed that this the front axle needs a bit more shimming. Uh, what I didn't say was I, I always use uh, in, generally there are um, shims included in a kit and this David Andrews kit is no difference. There's a whole series of, I've used all those uh, and some up here. They're, they're, uh, this is 28 thou shim um, and most kits have got the have got some shims in them. Uh, so when I finish the kits, I, I normally keep the shims, and they can be different thicknesses as well. These shims, uh, purely for for shimming up the axles to to reduce the side play. But um, I have got some from Slaters as well. Slaters do different shim sizes as well, and that's so I can I can make up pretty much any thickness I want. But as you can see, it's you know it, it's it's ticking over quite nicely and smoothly. I think a, a rolling road really is a is something else. It's a very good investment, and um, something I'd struggle to be without because I haven't got a layout of my own. But anyway, there you go. So I've folded up the the very basic uh, bogey frame. Uh, it's a one piece etching uh, which encompasses the two ends and the two sides and there's just the one gap there. I've soldered the bushes in uh, as it says and as you can see at the moment it's very very flimsy. Now this needs to be, it's critical really that this is level. So I'm going to use the JPL chassis jig now just to level it up and solder up the joint and to do that feed one pin through right through the through the uh, ax the back axle hole and then the other pin I just feed through the front one and then when I when I let that drop down on there because this this edge here is perfectly in line with the bottom of the um, the main hole uh, the I'll call it the datum axle hole if I put on put that on there and just press that now those two are perfectly in line and it's the same principle if you're building a rigid chassis whether it's a four four coupled six coupled or eight coupled if it's rigid you can peg up on 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 the back axle and wherever wherever the other one is you can ignore the uh, the intermediate ones at this stage but it, you just feed them through and hold them down and then you can bank them to one side so the to get it perfectly square you bank it to the one side you see that's can you see that just springing slightly when I release it? So when I solder that joint there, I will I just squeeze it to this so that the bush heads are against this are against this plate. And then this is where one of those places you could do with three fingers really. But uh, I'll turn it round this way around. Hold it there and hold that down there. Uh, and then I need to just hold that into the into the etched recess and solder that in place. So a little bit of 
solar flux from this really now what is a really manky brush it's my own fault for not getting some new ones but um, solder that corner up there and that's perfect now that's that's perfectly stable there what you do have to watch is that these these pins don't drop off I suppose really 316 silver bar would be a lot easier a lot longer lengths but um, anyway I haven't got any so well I've made a do with these so so that now is is rigid it's up against the edge so that I know that that's perfectly square now so uh, now it's just a case of carefully removing it and this is one of those places where you need to put some extra strength in so I now just go around and 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 put a, um, a drop of a little bit of a fillet of solder into all of the all of the uh, corners and that'll give me extra strength and after that we can I can then start building up the bogey all the detail One, I would say a wonderful thing is a re is a temperature controlled soldering iron. I think so anyway, because uh, it never burns the tip out. This runs at three hundred and fifty, three hundred and seventy five degrees, and I'm. I think I mentioned it before I always use 145 degree solder as my basic solder um, I do use hotter solder sometimes if it's if it's really necessary but um, but I, I've generally found that 145 is perfectly adequate for what I'm doing but you still need to wipe your, wipe the tip and this 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 tip here the actual soldering iron tip is probably is probably about I won't focus it's probably about five years old uh, and it's still as good as new so there's there's the basic bogey it's perfectly in line uh, there's no no parallelogram effect uh, I'll, I'll put the wheels in and then I'm gonna put it to one side while I do some more war work on the chassis so there we are um, this is the chassis I'm, it's, it's still very flimsy the because uh, it obviously it hasn't got any detail in it yet now but but it's perfectly lined up it's level um, and the the main chassis is ticking over nicely uh, so that's the end of really what I would intended to show you uh, I don't know whether you've learnt anything um, I've learned things I always learn from every 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 one that I build I always learn something um, and this is the first David Andrews kit that I've built in a long time and uh, but it's it's going together very very well I'm looking forward to the rest of it um, not a lot more to say really but maybe you've, you've learnt something from from it as well um, it made me smile I've, I've been I like to read up about the various engines and things that I'm building and I read that the the, the local crews at, at crew never called them duchesses or princesses or semis or anything. They were always known as biggins. And I must admit, by this, building this chassis, this is a biggin. So, 
Anyway, I hope you've learned something. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Bye.